that changed my life because I realized the power of events, how your business become a lot easier when you promote events. And also I was talking to a lot of people that had success there. I'm like, how do you make this kind of money? It's like, I just go crazy promoting those kind of events and the events do the work for me. It's like, a cheat code. It's like it's literally, literally a, a cheat, shortcut. It's literally a cheat code because like, they hear maybe the same thing from a different person or mm -hmm. they hear a story that changed their life. And then they kind of like, they're so fired up. Like the, the 90 days after the event were like crazy. And I'm like, wow, I wish we had this like almost like every month, you know, because it was like so good, you know? And that's when I really started, you know, putting all my effort in promoting events and, you know, GoPro coming to the masterminds and anything, you know, convention and things like that. Welcome to the Excellence Project. My name is Eric Worre. And today I have a friend and network marketing leader, Giordano Caretta, who has built here in the United States, but also in Italy and many different countries around the world. And the lessons in this conversation, I think are gonna be very, very good for you on how you get started, how do you expand, how do you grow, how do you get better, and how do you get the most from your team? I think you're gonna love it. Uh, so with no further ado, let's go into my conversation with Giordano Caretta. Giordano, how are you? Amazing. It's good to have you here. Thank you for inviting me. I, and and uh, you live in Italy, yes? No, I live in California, but I was born and raised in Italy. You live in California? Newport Beach, yes. I didn't know that you live in California. I thought you were living in Italy. I know you have a big Italian team. Yeah, because I'm I'm almost there all the time, but I live in California. I like my uh, California. <laughs> so when you're in Italy, where are you? Uh, all Rome is my place mm -hmm. where I was born, but okay. I'm all over the place right now. <laughs> I, it, it's so fascinating. Of all the different Italian places, Italy is one of those countries where it feels like 10 countries depend, depending on the city you're in. Yeah. And Rome feels like, uh, its own thing. Exactly. Like completely different from Amalfi or completely different from Venice or Florence or whatever. It's, it, it's its own thing. It's like, uh, it's like you're in a movie set or something when, True. You're, when you're, when you're walking around. So <clears throat> what was it like growing up there? It, it was it was amazing for a lot of things, you know, the people, the food is amazing, you know, uh, but it was quite challenging, you know, for opportunities. That's why actually I left. Really? Yeah. Because it's mostly just tourism? Uh, no, also because the salaries are very low in Italy. You mm. know, the economy is not that great right now. Uh, there's not a lot of opportunity. The average salary is like 1200 1300 bucks working eight hours a, a day. So wow. it was not what I wanted to do, you know. That's why I wanted to become a soccer player in Italy to make sure, big bucks. Sure, that's the thing. And I almost made it, actually. I was supposed to play professional. Then I got injured. Really? Yeah. All my life, I tried to become a soccer player. I train every day. I made it. And then I got injured and then done. Wow. So yeah. how long was this ago when you were you were uh, close to... I was uh, 15 years old when I got scouted to... In Italy, they get you really young. Of course. Of yeah. course. You get into the developmental teams, start traveling. Yeah. Doing all that stuff. What, what position you play? I was a goalkeeper. Wow. And, uh, really? Which I hated. I wanted to play anywhere except that. But then I was, that's what you I was were good at. It. Yeah. <clears throat> the range of those goalkeepers is pretty amazing. Um, well, you know, what they, what they're able to do. Um, because you're not like, you know, some of the goalkeepers that I've met are like really tall guys. You're not like a super tall guy. Yeah, I'm not super tall. You kind of, you know, average height, height like me. But pretty, pretty good skills for sure. <laughs> I'm sure you must be really, really quick. Yeah, uh, the penalty kicks look like they're terrifying. You know, you're like literally having to try and guess which I, way the guy's going. I actually stop a lot of those because I never guess. My coach told me if you guess, you're like you don't guess. No. So how do you know? I just wait and then I go really fast where the ball is going. Ah, ah. <laughs> All right. So <clears throat> the uh, growing up there, how how long have you um, kind of lived here in the United States? Uh, I moved here in 2012, so when I was 24 years old. Okay. Just aged myself. <laughs> yeah, young guy. Um, <clears throat> it's funny. I, it, 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 uh, so 30, 35? 35, yeah. Yeah. So when I was 35, I felt like, you know, I'm, I'm getting kind of old now. I mean, it's not, uh, you know, I'm not a, not a kid anymore, you know? And I laugh about that looking back at it now. I mean, you you so much time, so young, so much, you know, blue, blue, blue ocean, blue sky in front of you. Right. Uh, it's kind of amazing. So, um, <clears throat> so moving there when you were 22, 24, I moved here to California. 
Okay, when you're 24. Moving here when you're 24. Um, you, I, I'm guessing you just kind of went through the process in Italy and decided it's time for me to go have an adventure in the world? Yeah, I mean, it was... Uh, what, what brought you here? Yeah, so after I didn't make it in the professional world, uh, kind of uh, one of the hardest time in my life, you know, I was a young kid, you know, that was my dream was taken away and I didn't want to go to school. I didn't want to get a degree, get a job and get an average life. So uh, I let myself go, you know, so I started hanging out with the wrong people, doing any mistake that a young man can do. And I was living like a life that I, I didn't like anymore, you know. So after I tried to get it back and go to school, but it was too late because now I had this label on me, you know, like started doing, you know, drugs, things like that. And I just let myself go, you know, like I thought my life was over and for four years, that's all I do. I did. And uh, just that's kinda, just kind of surviving, trying yeah. to figure out what you're going to do. Yeah, it's it's really interesting. You know what I, I think is the longest, the toughest season is between formal education and finding the thing that's going to be your thing. Right. You know, that you're going to get traction with, you're going to grow with, you're going to, you know, you can, you can kind of settle in and what's going to be my career, what's going to be my calling, you know, um, <clears throat> and beginning is particularly brutal for people. I think, um, who choose the sports path mm -hmm. or the arts path when they go on the journey and because the higher you go, the more difficult it is. Yeah. Right. And it's, and there's a certain skill ceiling or genetic ceiling, or there's some kind of ceiling that or injury ceiling you know because <clears throat> um i i know some professional athletes you know people who played here in the united states here here are the big big deal you know uh you know global football you know we call soccer over here i know <laughs> uh which i don't understand why but i suppose because we you know we we borrowed the football name for for the nfl but um is is rising here you know Messi just moved over to miami and who knows what's going to happen over here if, if we start throwing some money at it um maybe we'll be able to start to be able to compete uh sure. with, with the big boys but um but i've known a lot of people in nfl and nba and nhl and all that and <clears throat> it's kind of sad because you, you start with this huge pool of people uh when you're a kid and it just gets smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller based upon your skill, based upon your genetics. You know, sometimes you could be super skillful, but if you're just not tall enough or not quite quick enough or mm -hmm. uh, something, there's some limitation or you're prone to injury, then at some point you have to face this reality. You know, it's like, hmm, I'm not going to be able to, to be a professional here. Uh, right. So that happened to me in, in two different ways because growing up, I wanted to either be a, like a performer, you know, like be an actor or something mm -hmm. or be an athlete. Okay. So, uh, and I was always just average at, at both, like as an athlete, it, you know, growing up in, in school, um, I, I had more ambition than I had talent and actually more ambition than I had discipline you know, in order to be able to kind of really do what was necessary. Mm -hmm. So I had these ideas in my head, you know, I had this vision in my head, but I didn't quite get there. So I remember I only went to college for uh, one semester. That was it. Um, and it was to play football here. I made the team, you know, I'm, you know, this is going to be great. But I was second string on the team. I was going to play quite a bit because they were a very good team. But before the season started, I was so beat up. I had a couple cracked ribs. I had my knee had kind of separated. My quadricep muscle had kind of separated on one side. Mm -hmm. Ice packs on my shoulder and stuff. And I'm like, I'm not gonna. I'm. Th this is kind of the top for me. I'm not gonna go any farther. So this doesn't make sense at all. So that was the dead end for 
sport mm-hmm. for a, for a, a, an idea, and then for performance, I wanted to kind of do Broadway stuff as kind of a a kickoff thing when I was like, nice. when I was in like my late teens, you know, uh, like twenty years old maybe. And I, I mean, I went through the whole deal, and I was acting, and I was doing, taking all my lessons, and doing all this stuff, and I thought it was pretty good. And I went and saw a Broadway show where this lady uh, did just a cameo, um, a singing. A, uh, it was called the Buddy Holly story, and and they and she did she did this cameo, and she was so amazing. She uh, on my best day, I couldn't come ten percent of what she she could do and mm-hmm. i'm like oh my gosh she's she's got to be a star she's got to have a, a record deal she's got to have all this stuff and i looked up the, in the program opened it up and i saw that for the last five years she'd been singing in a lounge on a cruise ship <laughs> and i went oh okay i guess that's not going to be my dream so i literally i'm like okay that's done that's done now the funny thing is I found a way to still perform. Right. You know, it just wasn't, it, a bad thing would have been me getting a lead on a Broadway show and having to do eight shows a week um, for $100,000 a year, living in some one bedroom apartment with, you know, no residual income. Right. Uh, that would have been a bad thing. It was good thing. It was good that that door shut, you know, so I could explore other things. It's funny but, you said that because like now, like I would never change the career for a soccer player with the one that I have right now. Yes. And it's crazy, you know? So like, I'm glad that that actually happened the way it happened. I, I literally this morning, um, a guy sent me a DM on Instagram and he's a, a NFL player that you know played for five six years and just kind of for five or six teams and was good enough to be in the nfl that's super elite but he's kind of done you know there's there's no you know, injuries and different things are going on and he's like you know i really want to make it network marketing so uh this is going to be my next career I found this next thing you know so it. it's uh anyway it's, it's sometimes when we look at roadblocks things that get in our way it's not a bad thing right it was necessary correct for you to find the thing so getting through sport figuring out what you were going to do um or or actually hanging around for three or four years feeling sorry for yourself and you know yeah partying with your friends yeah um you finally at 23 24 say okay i'm going to do something yeah. What happens? I just wanted to go away because like I, you know, I couldn't stop thinking about me being a soccer player and I wanted to do anything else. And Italy, you know, that's all people talk about, you know, soccer, soccer, like all day. And I'm like, I got to go far away and where nobody knows me and start again. And maybe I'll, I'll find a way. So you were, you were like literally going on a quest. Yeah. You, I had no you, degree. You had, you had no, you had no, did you know anybody here? I only knew one person that was working at a restaurant here as a server. Uh, and I slept on his couch for like a year and a half and I had no degree. I didn't have any money, uh, barely spoke English. I was lucky because I had the, uh, the documents to be legally here because my grandma was American. So I had the oh, American citizenship. So nice. at least I had that. That's bi- that's a big deal. It's a big deal, you know? And, uh, that's all I had. And I, I came here. I'm like, I had no idea what I was going to do because, you know, I only play soccer my whole life and I had no degree. I never worked in my life. I only helped my dad with his business a little bit. So I didn't even have a residence. I'm like, what, how am I going to find the job? You know? And that was uh so you, you hung out on his couch at least you had that yeah at least i had that oh, and, one person i knew and did you do did you you know get some jobs at a restaurant like he like he was working or yeah what? yeah i actually i never work in a restaurant so i try to i make like a fake resume you know like with the mm-hmm. oh i work in the best italian restaurant and they back me up and but then when they saw me carrying places i did you you can't do it you know so i started in a restaurant but the guy was from rome like me he's like i'm gonna help you but I can't put you in the in the room, you know? So I started like cleaning the floors, doing delivery, anything that I could do to like make some money at the beginning. Mm-hmm. Then eventually I became a busboy and then eventually I became a server after like a year and a half. Okay. So you're like a server at 25, 26. Yeah, I'm a server. And then uh, I start, I got my license to become a soccer coach. Because ah. I thought maybe, you know, maybe I didn't make my dream happen, but I could help the There's kids. another way, know? yeah. And I start coaching soccer. And for three years, that's all I did. You know, restaurant coaching, restaurant coaching every day, Monday to Sunday. 
no days off. I was doing also private training because you know, those salaries are not even enough no, to pay the no. bills. And I was here by myself. So, and after three years doing that life, you know, I came here to make money, right? And I found myself with like, away from my family, away from my friend. My friend left, went back to Italy. Uh, and really, it's, yeah, instead of having, you know, money, I actually accumulated $30,000 in that. And I was away from my family. I couldn't even pay my bills anymore. My parents are telling me like, you gotta come back. We can't support you anymore. I didn't know what to do anymore. And that's when, you know, God blessed me with the- So you got introduced yeah. to this. How did that happen? It's a, it's a funny story, but uh, actually I met a girl on Tinder huh? and I end up- Swiping a, left, swiping right. Yeah, and I end up in a in a room where actually Colton was doing the, the presentation. Huh? And I saw the thing- So wait, 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 hold on. Somebody was like prospecting on Tinder, kind of? Yeah, it just happened like, you know, we just like were talking and then actually I was coaching soccer in Irvine and we were talking, hey, what are you doing? And she's like, oh, I'm in Irvine. I'm like, oh, me too. I just finished coaching. And we were actually across the street from each other. I'm like, oh, why don't you stop by here? There's a health event. I'm like, sure. I was literally around the corner. I literally pulled over and I walk in. I was like sweating with my coaching clothes. Like I smelled bad, you know, after yeah, three yeah. hour session. And I walk in and I see this, uh, this thing. I didn't know anybody. And I thought- Dressed were, up people, fancy Dressed up people. people talking about, you know, and, and I know, like, I liked everything. I liked the presentation. Hold on, did like, did what? Well, did you end up hooking up with this girl? Or no, 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 we never even uh, get out, hang out one time. Like, really? I saw, never, never. So, so it's just like, so she introduced you, kind of. Yeah. So okay. I went there. I saw the presentation, and uh, everything was great, except that there was, you know, five thousand dollars to get in. Yeah. And I was in thirty grand in that, and I'm like, how how am I gonna pull this off? You, you know? so so, but you saw the the opportunity. What do you, what went through your mind the first time you saw it? Uh, I thought, Had you ever seen anything like it before, like uh, in Italy or I anywhere? I knew a little bit about uh, network marketing. I saw like other companies, but I never really got involved, but I haven't seen nothing like this. When I saw it, it made sense for me to have the product. Uh, I thought it was gonna be really hard for me to sell something like that because I was broke my whole life. I'm like, mm -hmm. how am I gonna sell a product like that? But the reason why I actually got involved, and uh, I always tell this in all of my trainings, you know, when at the end of the presentation, Col Colton put me on the side and heard my stories. And he told me, you know, you know, there's nobody doing this in our company in Italy. And we, we have an office, but it's kind of that. There's really nobody, not one Italian person that I know of. You're like, huh? And he said, if you learn this, you could become the number one person for us in Italy. Mm. And for me, you know, after many years, you know, people putting me down and not believing in me, like, you know, seeing someone that believed in me changed my life. Cause I'm like, wow, someone think that I can be the number one at something. Like, I know I wanted to be the number one at something, you know? And that changed my life, you know? And because of that, I'm like- Just the idea. Just the idea of me, like, I start thinking, wow, I could be, imagine me be, coming back to my country where everybody thought I was a Come failure. Back a hero. And becoming the number one and, and, you know, and everybody talked about me and, and I got excited. I'm like, I'm gonna, Prove them wrong, like it says in the back. Yeah, know? yeah. So, all right. So, so you see this. How do you figure out how to start? Because you don't have any money. I try everything: credit cards. I got denied. I got a loan, co-signer, and I literally had to go to the bank for a, a week in a row. And then uh, I, I finally got to know the manager of the bank, and I literally beg her, say, "Hey, I need a five thousand dollar loan." Uh, I was in between jobs at that time, switching to another soccer club, so I didn't even have paid stuff. I only have the restaurant, and she's like, "Listen, we we can give you a loan." Uh, but it's a 30% uh, interest because you're high risk. It's your first loan. I didn't have a credit history really. And I just took it. I'm like, okay, this is my shot. You know, and I, I took the loan and I figured it out. Okay. So you take the loan, you get started. Yeah. And you're in California. I'm in California. Yeah. So talk to me about, and your idea is I'm going to bring this to my country. Yeah, because all my contacts pretty much were there at that time. All your kind, you're, so you're in California, no money. You go get a thirty percent loan. Mm -hmm. You get started with the with with the company. Uh -huh. um, and for those listening, they, they deal with a kind of a a high end product. Uh, you know, so so it's a higher ticket sale, right. like a typical tip, uh, typical sale of this is like $5,000, yes? Mm -hmm. Something yeah. like that, that's typical yeah. for, for a customer you know, to be able to you know, get the product, get it, get it installed in their home and, and, and start using it, right? Yeah. So, and you have <clears throat> some limiting beliefs. Like, what are you thinking when you're with your prospects? Like, you, again, back in Italy, 
you talk about the average salary and mm -hmm. you talk about, you know, job opportunities and you talk about young people like the people that you know and how are you thinking you know your own limit how, how is your brain not getting in the way and saying people are not going to be able to afford this even though it's great you know what did you what did you do to get past that i mean i was actually it was a crazy story because my mom and dad after they found out what they did and they knew i was struggling with my bills so when they heard that i got a 30 percent loan they literally took a last minute flight and they came here because they're like something is wrong with you. He's not thinking straight. Like he's not affording the food and he's got a $5,000 loan to get a my crazy. Bo my boy got crazy. They literally, came, and I'm not kidding. They came he here with a last minute flight. took a loan from the mafia. And they told me, you know, cause you know, we have a 30 day return policy and I just did it. It's like, they wanted to see what was going on. Uh, cause they never seen me like that. And actually they came here to convince me to cancel and return the product cause mm -hmm. I couldn't afford it. Mm -hmm. But the, the funny story is that I actually, you know, I'm pretty stubborn. So I'm like, I'm not going to return it. And I actually shared the product with my mom. Mm -hmm. And my mom, you know, at that time was like really, you know, uh, sick. I, I know we cannot make health claims, but all I can say is like the product ended up changing her life, like mm -hmm. in, in the most incredible way. So she went back to Italy and she actually purchased the product like mm -hmm. right away. That was my first uh, sale, you know? Yeah. And so she wasn't doing it just to support you. She was doing it she because really, it really it, changed it her life. Yeah, you know, like she had that, some major health issues and she, it, the product really changed her life big time. And when I saw that, I, I really realized, okay, it might, maybe it's a crazy product, maybe it's so expensive, but like, you know, if it, this happened with my mom, just imagine how many other people in the world might need this product. Cause I know a lot of people that are struggling with their health. And that's how I started my, my journey in network marketing. But, and I was excited cause I, I'm like, okay, now all I have to do is I share with people, you know? So, 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 okay. Your mom and dad are like, oh, all right. All right, kid. Did they finally just accept that you're going to do this? My dad, no, no. My dad, dad was, was like really like, angry about yeah, it. Yeah. Yeah. Not, he did not support. And he thought my mom was crazy. And she was just saying yes. Or saying that the product was good just to support me because right. I was her son. Yeah, yeah. So, so yeah. anyway, so you got like this limited support. Yeah. Um, uh, how did you, and the reason why I'm asking is there's there's a lot of people here uh, that are listening around the world that maybe they're in one country and their company or their contacts are in another country. Mm -hmm. You know, so they you know they live here, but you know they know a lot of people in France, or they know a lot of people in Italy, or they know know a lot of people speak German or Spanish or whatever in some other country. So I'm, I'm curious as to uh, kind of focus in on step by step how did you without a lot of credibility without a lot of money um without a lot of support mm -hmm. right just a belief in the product and a little bit of results there and a vision that that colton you know, your your upline had kind of planted in you you could be number one like okay mm -hmm. um walk me through step by step how you went from sitting in California mm -hmm. to starting to build a business in Italy, you know, cause this is not something you can just necessarily talk about over the phone. People right. need to try it, sample it, you know, demonstrate it, all of that stuff. How, how did you do it? Yeah. So after that happened with my mom, uh, you know, I got, and this really, was when, what, what year do you remember? It was the end of 2015. I got my, my product in the 2015 got and it. then my mom, like at the end of the, uh, the, of the year, so after that, I start, you know, talking to everybody. I got, I got no results. So in one year go by. So calling, just on the calling, phone. Calling, messaging, sending videos. Uh -huh. And, you know, both in Italy and then the people that I was meeting people here brought people to the presentation, that I everything. And uh, my upline quit, uh, uh, you know. The, the, uh, you know, the, the, the Tinder, the yeah, Tinder girl. Jilly, like she quit for like a year and a half or something like that. She just... And I, that was my only... Because I met Colton at the presentation, but I didn't know Colton. I, I didn't have his number or nothing. Hold on, hold on, hold on. The Tinder was Jilly? Yeah. Like Jilly Jilly. Yeah, yeah. Torres. Yeah, yeah. We met we met like that. Yeah. You met on Tinder? Yes. Oh my God. Yes. Okay. Like that's a completely different connection. Yes. Um, so all right, all right, all right, all right. So, Getting this in, so 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 she She quit the business and then uh you know, one year go by and then uh I I, I was by myself, you know, I didn't know anybody yet. Because Colton, like I met him one time, but I talked to him for five minutes and that was it. Yeah. I didn't have his contact, nothing. So a year go by and then uh I keep working really hard, zero sales, making zero money. And then there was a convention in Las Vegas. 
and I didn't have any money to go, but I'm like, what am I gonna do? I mean, I don't know anybody in this company. Your, your so, company convention. So I reach out to like a stranger on Facebook that I saw was going to the convention. I look it up, you know, and I literally carpool with some stranger. I didn't have money for the hotel. I asked him if I could sleep on the floor with them. They say, dude, you're crazy, but whatever. So I slept on, on the floor and I went to the convention. That's what I, I met Colton and I become friends with them. And I saw so many people just like me that were, you know, changing their life, quitting their job. You know, the convention, like you get really excited. Yeah. And that's when I I did something even crazy. So I, I go back and I almost got fired because I couldn't take the days off at the rest. And they told me, if you go, you're you're done. So they take me off the schedule for like three weeks. And uh, then I, I go back to the restaurant, but I quit. And I'm not making money yet. I was just excited. I was like a three or four sales in. And uh, I quit the restaurant. So it got even harder because I can't pay my bills. You know, I was like really, really, really struggling at that time. And then I just kept going. I reached out to Colton a lot and eventually start picking up a little bit, a little bit, a little bit. And uh, everything changed in actually 2017 because when my mom introduced me to a guy in Italy, that was his dance teacher. And this guy wanted to sell me on his network marketing opportunity. And my mom saw that I was not making money. And she's like, you got to talk to this guy. He has a good project and he wants to expand in America. I'm like, all right, let, let's, let's talk. So I, I, we do a Zoom and I listen to his whole presentation. I end up buying the product because it's, it's always a good product. But I'm like, I'm not, you know, doing, I'm, I'm really loyal to this business. I want to do this. And I said, do you mind to, do you want to see what I'm doing? It's like, okay, sure. So after I buy the product, I do the whole presentation. I didn't know how to close or how to do that. But at, at the end of the presentation, I remember someone in sales told me the first one that speak loses. You know, that's the only thing I remember. So we look at each, I finished the presentation. I'm like, okay, how, how am I going to close? I was not good right, yet. We look at each other like 30 seconds, 45 seconds, nobody's speaking. I'm like, okay, this is getting awkward. And he looks down, I look down. And, and then he looks back at me. He's like, all right, uh, what do I need to do to get started? And I'm like, you want to get started? I say, okay. So he went to, he was in Italy, obviously, and was here. And um, he was one of the top leaders in, uh, in his company. So he goes to the office in Italy and say, just use my ID, be, and be, I'll be your sponsor, buys all the three products. That his name was uh, Arturo, is now my number one distributor in, on my whole organization. And he, believe, he just believed in my vision. And I told him the same thing that Colton told me. He said, hey, there's nobody in Italy, there's nothing. We don't have videos, we don't have material, we don't have trainings, we have nothing. And I have no success, I gotta tell you the truth, but I know Colton and this mm -hmm. guy is making this, this and this. And, and I told him, if we duplicate what he's doing, all I need is a few people that believe in my vision and you know someone there, and you're gonna become the number one guy there. And then he got excited too. And after that, I start flying to Italy. Young guy, same same age as you? Uh, he's like 10 years older than okay, me. Okay, got it. And after that, I start flying to Italy. I went eight times in 22 months, like back and forth, back and forth. And I literally told him like, let's go over your list. Now, how are you affording this? Uh, it was it was a struggle. It was a struggle. You know, I, again, I get, in I 2017, mean, I, 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 my business started to pick up a little bit. So yeah. I was making maybe like a few thousand a month. But you're, so, but you're pouring it all back in. Plus yeah, some. I was like going with the cheapest flights possible, right. you know, and things brutal, like that. Brutal, brutal flights. Yeah, right? yeah, international. Middle three, seats, yeah. yeah, it was, it was crazy. Um, and, uh, but I had, the, I just had the belief, you know, and in 2017, you know, uh, my business was like, I was making a few thousand part time and still working at the restaurant. So like mm -hmm. I was doing uh, decent and we started going and going and going with the, I, I, I told this guy, like, just give me your list and we go through, give me all your top people and we're gonna meet them. But we didn't have nothing. I had a folder printed with my PowerPoint in English and I was showing to people and like, people don't even speak English. I do that, I don't even know what, what it's on the, why, on the did, folder. Why, did, why didn't you put it in Spanish? It's or Spanish, back Italian, in the days, Italian, I, Italian. Italian. That's all I did. Like, I, I, I mean, I, 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 I asked still to create the material, but the crazy story is that we meet his first two top people, like, and I- Arturo's. Yeah, Arturo's uh, two people that, and we closed both of them. Okay. right away like okay. we know demo not trying the product just with the vision again and i'm like this is fun you know and after we start doing presentation after presentation after presentation and at the beginning it was really really hard because we do presentation and in italy people don't like network marketing especially when you talk about the business so what was happening we do the product demo and then as soon as we start talking about the money people get up and leave and now mm. this is a scam whatever and it was really hard, you know, my, my people wanted to quit and then they started doing only product demo, no business, no success. But I kept going and talking about the business because I'm like, the reason why people are getting up is the reason why the average salary is $1,500 because mm -hmm. when you present a good opportunity, people get up and leave. They don't even listen. How, how are they ever gonna make money? And I told my people like, we're gonna change 
the mindset, you know, like th those people need help. That's why they're running away. You know, they're being hurt, you know, but this is the good opportunity. Eventually, you know, we start picking up and now after six years, we have the number one team uh, in Europe. We have like, you know- In Europe or Italy? In, in Europe now we're like at the top, top wow. probably top two, three teams in Europe. We brought Italy to one of the top offices in Europe. Uh, and I have like seven or 8,000 people on my team and like 52 people about earning like six figures. It's, it's just crazy. My organization is very deep. Yeah. Sure. I just want to jump in and quickly interrupt this podcast interview and give those of you involved in network marketing a very special message. And that message is this. If you want to grow your business, I can help. If you're just getting started, you don't have any recruits yet, you don't have much of a team, I can help you get to your first 10 recruits. If you got some recruiting going on, but you need more help with duplication, I can help you on your journey from part-time to full-time. And if you're a serious player, I can help you scale and grow your business. All you have to do is go to goproacademy.com, goproacademy.com. Wherever you are in your journey of network marketing, this program will help you get where you want to go much, much faster. I've helped millions of people learn how to recruit. I've helped tens of thousands of people get to six figure a year income. And I've helped over 500 people get to a seven figure annual income inside of this network marketing profession. I can help you too. Go to goproacademy.com, goproacademy.com. Okay, so um, the there's a lot of lessons in the story, right? Yeah. Uh, so, in, an interesting part of it is, you know, one, vision's important. Two. Right? So the theme that I heard through this whole thing, this whole, the, 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 the last little part of your story is, Colton had a vision and planted belief in you. Mm -hmm. You had a vision, planted belief in Arturo, even though it's just like, okay. Um, and you know, without not a lot of skill, you just decided whoever spe speaks last is, is gonna be in the power position. So I'm just gonna sit here and shut up because I don't know what to say at the end of this presentation. And he said, all right, let's do it. Um, and then you believed in him, mm -hmm. planted that vision. Yep. You know, first, you know, biggest, best, somebody's gonna do it, might as well be us. Mm -hmm. You know, and then that was kind of a centerpiece of your whole talk while other people were focused on, you know, nothing happens in, until a sale happens in our business. Right. Right. You know, so sales have to happen and that's fine. Some people are just going to be sharing the product and that's, that's, that's good and important and, and central to how everybody makes money. But the people who go from making a few sales and making a few dollars to full-time income, like you say, you've got dozens and dozens and dozens of people making six figures a year in, inside of your business mm -hmm. six years later, um, and you're making multiple, multiple mm -hmm. of that. Uh, in, in, in order for that to happen, when, when some people would just say, you know what? There's limiting beliefs in every country, you know? So, and in every culture, there's limiting beliefs. So one limiting belief you're, you, you're dealing with is, you know, that, that this can't be real. Mm -hmm. It's a scam. I heard about this stuff, you know, the cynical, critical mindset. And some people would say, yeah, I guess it's just not an opportunity here in Italy. I mean, Italians just don't. Right. You know, they just won't. And what made you think, no, we're going to change that versus... Because a lot of people on your team probably just believed it and said, you know what, uh, you can sell product here, but you can't build a downline here. I mean, what, what made me believe is that, you know, when I look at all my friends that, you know, went to school, they studied, they became doctors, lawyers, there was not, it, the salary in Italy, like even for, for those positions are not even close to the one that I was looking at here. You know, there were people making crazy money in our company. And I'm like, I don't know anybody in my whole life that make this kind of income in Italy, unless you're either a soccer player or a politician, because in Italy, the top 1% would be, and I'm talking about the wealthiest people, probably 300K a year, 
which in America, especially in Newport Beach, that's not good, right? So I said, how else people are gonna achieve that income? So like, eventually I'm gonna help someone do that income and then like everybody wants to do it. Mm. You know, and, and Arturo believed in me and I'm like, I'm gonna, Arturo is gonna be the number one and this is just gonna be a snowball effect. And, uh, and also like, I mean, for me, I had really no other way to change my life. And I, I didn't have a expiration date on my plan. You know, like I always tell people like, you can be like, oh, I'm gonna try. And then if I fail, I quit. For me, I'm like, I'm gonna, this could take me five years, 10 or even 15 years to build the number one team. But that's what I wanna do. Cause like, that's, I have not, nothing else to do. And there's no other place where I can make this kind of income personally. Yeah, I understand. But what gave you the strength when prospects are walking out, when people are saying it's a scam, I like your product, but this business is baloney. Uh, what 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 triggered in your brain to say nope? I don't believe that. Um, I mean, I was doing a lot of personal development, and I you know I listened a lot to you know Jim Rohn, and mm -hmm. then I started to come into GoPro, and I remember Jim Rohn was talking about the farmer, right? Like when at the mm -hmm. beginning when you're preparing the soil, you're working really hard, and you're not getting paid, you know. And then you're planting the seeds and you work really hard and you're not getting paid and people like want to just walk away because they don't see any result at mm. all. And that was exactly talking to me, you know, because mm -hmm. I was like preparing the soil. I'm like, hey, I'm just preparing the soil. I'm just planting the seeds and I'm just going to keep watering, you know. And then like Jim Rohn said, you know, like the storm is going to come, it's going to take some seeds and then someone is going to grow on the wrong ground. And then eventually someone is going to grow, but then it's going to be taken away, you know, like, and I, I just remember that. I'm like, I'm just, I just know that if I'm, I'm a farmer, right, mm -hmm. I prepare the soil. I plant the seeds and I water them every day. Eventually they're gonna grow. Yeah. And so like, that was my, my whole thing, you know? And then, I'm, and then eventually they started growing. So I'm like, I'm not gonna quit until I, I see it cause I know it's coming. And I listened to a lot of stories of network marketing, people that done similar things and they all have similar story with a very hard beginning. And then eventually start picking up. So I just knew what was at the other side of the fear and the negativity and all that stuff, you know? The, the real lesson is, is you know, in your, in your mind, when you're talking with your, your key first person was who, whoever speaks last, you know, is in the power position or wins, whatever, quote unquote wins. No, you say whoever speaks first loses. At first, the end. Well, yeah. Either way. Yeah. It, yeah. It's the same principle. Yeah. True, true, true. Right. Yeah. Um, the, in, in business, many times, if you feel like you have a product, a company that is built and people don't understand it or they reject it initially, which is typical, mm -hmm. you know? Uh, German philosopher Arthur Schopenhauer said, all truth goes through three stages. First, it is ridiculed. Second, it is violently opposed. And third, it's accepted as self-evident. It's obvious, mm -hmm. right? It's, well, of course. Um, so the lesson there is whoever has the most belief wins. Right. If your belief that this is going to work is stronger and more consistent than the whole country's belief that it doesn't work or it's a scam, your belief will win if it's stronger. True. But if you let them convince you, it's impossible here. I see people get convinced all the time. Like, oh, you know, you can't build in the United States. Oh, no, it doesn't work in Japan. No, no, no. Italy, you know, 100%. everybody wants to go on strike all the time. You know, blah, blah, blah. they all have all these limiting beliefs. Or like the, the big one is in the month of August, you can't do any business in right. Europe. It's impossible. Yeah, talk in September. <laughs> you can't talk, You can't even do any business in August, which is not true. You can, you know, you just have to have a stronger belief true. Than, than the people who say there's nobody to talk to. It's impossible. Everybody's on holiday, right? Mm -hmm. Um there's somebody who's hungry out there that are waiting for a call, waiting for, for an opportunity. So whoever has the most belief wins is interesting. And then the other lesson that I get out of this initial story is if you're persistent enough and you're consistent enough and you get creative, you're figuring out a way, you, you know, you're dealing with your loan that you took out to start your business and you're working in a restaurant that you don't necessarily love mm -hmm. in order to be able to survive while you get things started and you're willing to have conversations, you're just one person away. In our business, so interesting because you can bring in a, a whole bunch of people that do nothing, mm -hmm. um, but you're literally one person away from everything taking off. Because it's so interesting 
I remember when it happened for me, I, I'm bringing in people, they're quitting. I'm bringing in people, they do nothing. I'm bringing in people, they disappear. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I bring in people I thought for sure were going to do something. And some of them you know, don't do anything. And then they blame me and all kinds of weird things happen. But then one person took off. And I went, oh, finally, there's some proof mm -hmm. that this can work. And what it, that one person, when they took off, what it did for my confidence, what I'm sure it did for your confidence, mm -hmm. it made you like, okay, let's go. So you probably ran with him for a while mm -hmm. uh, to help him grow, 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 grow. Because yeah. it's fun when you have somebody that wants to run with you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then it probably gave you more confidence to go find another one. Yeah, yeah. And then I attracted a lot more people for sure. I started, you know, recruiting a lot of people after that. Also in the United States too. Uh, so, so, and, so in the United States, where did you find the people in the United States? Uh, I mean, what was I, your strategy? Uh, offline, online. I mean, I play a lot of sports, so I know a lot of sports people. I was coaching, so I knew a lot of the parents of the kids. So, like, I would take, take, share the product with them, invite them to the, like anybody that I would really could so talk just, to. Just meet new people every day, you know, going to the gym, meet new people. Social media. We started to do social media mm -hmm, mm -hmm. as well, and uh, you know, I, I made a lot of sales through Instagram uh, back in the days. So yeah, that's what was your, your, when did, when did you say, okay, um, social media is going to be a thing uh, for, I mean, for growing your business? Actually Colton was calling me every day to convince me to post stories, but I, I never did social media and I say no for like many, many times until eventually I started doing it. And then as I started doing it, you know, it was at the beginning of Instagram, you know? So I, I built pretty good brand and, uh, I started attracting people, you know? Yeah. So you start attracting some people, start figuring it out, what mm -hmm. works, what doesn't, how do you convert a connection to a, fr a friend and a friend to a prospect, prospect to customer maybe, a customer to maybe take a look at your business. Yeah, and then, I mean, I came to um, GoPro in uh, 2018 and I brought a lot of people. That was there. your first one? That was my first one. Uh, so where was that, at MGM? It or was in Las Vegas, yeah. At MGM Garden Arena or where? Uh, I think I'm jam. Yeah. It was yeah. in 2018. I came 2018 and 2019. Uh, what was in, that like your first time? But in time? 2017, I, I sent one of my person uh, there because I, I was in Italy at that time. So uh -huh. I, couldn't, I couldn't make it. Uh, and he came back with like this book of notes. And I saw it. I'm like, oh my God, I got to go to the next one, you know? And I came uh, and I remember Colton had me maxed out my credit card. Uh, I brought like 25 people and that's really like and actually it's funny because most of those people are now in the top rank hmm. from back from 2018. isn't it funny uh you know combination of you attending your first event for your company in vegas mm -hmm. um something for people to think about that's listening or watching is big decisions happen at events mm -hmm. specifically big decisions happen at destination events when you get outside of your backyard you're sleeping in a strange bed in a hotel somewhere. You're away from all the distractions of your home life. Mm -hmm. um, and you get to see a vision. You get to see, huh. And like the 25 people that you bought, brought to GoPro. Uh, and, and for those that don't know, we, we do a big events like the Super Bowl. It's the World Cup of network marketing. Mm -hmm. um, the first weekend of every year, 2023, is going to be December 1, 2, and 3 first, second, and third. Um, and if people want to get information about that, they can go to gopro2023.com mm -hmm. and uh, and they can learn about it, get a ticket uh, yeah. to, to attend the event um, in person. I think it's sold out, but virtual people can still get a ticket. So um, you get 25 people. And what was interest, what's interesting about that, that decision is like, okay, I'm going to do that, is those 25 people could only hear so much from you. Mm-hmm. But when they get in this arena, and they, they see all of this example of growth and greatness and somebody who looks like them and sounds like them and succeeds like them, um, it changes them. You know, they're sitting there just going, oh, you know, I got to go do this. What happened after the, tell me what happened with the 25 after, the, after that. It was incredible. It was like, I mean, how many of the 25, because not everybody stays, right? In not network everybody. marketing, people, people come and go. Mm -hmm. But out of the 25, if you can try and think back to that group, mm -hmm. how many of those 25 are still active in your business? I think at least 15. 15 of them. Yeah. And 
how many of, of those 15 are making six figures a year? At least four or five. Four or five. And the rest are making some money. Decent, yeah. Right, yeah. So five out of 25 making six figures. And how, if they didn't go to that event, what do you think the numbers would be? Mm, probably zero. Mm. Probably zero. Because like uh, my business, I, I realized that, that changed my life because I realized the power of events, how your business become a lot easier when you promote events. And also I was talking to a lot of people that had success there. I'm like, how do you make this kind of money? It's like, I just go crazy promoting those kind of events and the events do the work for me. It's I'm a like, cheat code. It's like it's literally, literally a, a shortcut. It's literally a cheat code. Cause like, they hear maybe the same thing from a different person or mm -hmm. they hear a story that changed their life. And then they kind of like, they're so fired up. Like the, the 90 days after the event were like crazy. And I'm like, wow, I wish we had this like almost like every month, you know, cause it was like so good, you know? And that's when I really started, you know, putting all my effort in promoting events and, you know, GoPro coming to the masterminds and anything, you know, convention and things like that. Uh, interesting. So I, I will tell you, top earners figure out a way to promote because it, it creates leverage in a, in a way that you can't get it in, in any other form. Mm -hmm. So if somebody's not in network marketing, they listen to this, they're an entrepreneur and they're, but they're building a team, right? Find something. Is there, is there a, a conference in your profession? Is there a, a personal development event that you can bring your, your people to? Is there somewhere where people can dream for a few days and, and start thinking about the possibilities of what if? It, it really is a cheat code. The more, the more people you can get to an event like that, um, the better. Now, there's still lim limiting beliefs that people have. Mm -hmm. I can't go because I don't speak English. I can't go because it's too far of a flight or I don't know anybody. Like you slept on the floor first time you came to your company convention, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Uh, you know, you, you, you took a leap of faith for these 25 people um, to help them and, and encourage them and get them to attend. Um, you have to still be dealing with people that say, you know, a lot of this training, a lot of this event stuff is in English. Mm -hmm. I only speak Italian. How do you overcome that? Uh, I mean, I, I remember well, one time we had the, the translation, so I, I help people. Like uh, sometimes I told them just buy one ticket, have someone that speak English, you know, try to plug into- some, Get a living room uh, filled yeah, with people or something. Yeah, get a living room. You know, you guys watch it together. Someone speak English, they give you the nuggets. Just watch it anyway, you know, like- I have people that didn't even speak English and they watch and they were fired up anyway. I don't know how they were crying and things like that. So you're ready to go. It's, it's like a sale, you know, like uh, some people, I just give them a ticket, you know, like I, I, I did that a lot. Kind uh, of investing in the team. Yeah. So for example, like when they, when they purchase our product, uh, one of the first thing I do is like, if, if it's a direct person to me, mm -hmm. I always give them a ticket for the next event that I pay mm -hmm. if I believe in them, you mm -hmm. know? Mm -hmm. Uh, cause then they feel kind of, okay, now I gotta show up cause he gave me a ticket and I know if they show up, their life is going to change. So I'm like, like that, that's crazy. You know? So I've been investing a lot in, in tickets and I trade for, Hey, if you get, get involved today, yeah. I'll give you a ticket. I only have two left, you know? Yeah. A tip, you, the, what, what he's talking about is something that we talk about in our mastermind and, mm -hmm. and, uh, and just kind of a general leadership principle when you're, when you're working with a team, um, sometimes if you just give you hurt people mm -hmm. um, unintentionally through you're wanting to help. So what I try and teach leaders is never just give always trade. So it's like, I have this ticket and if I give you this ticket, will you do this? Mm -hmm. I'll trade you an action, an activity that is going to be good for your, you and your business for this thing. Mm -hmm. and this is my belief in you, but you have to take a step. Yep. You know, so you weren't just giving and saying, please show up, please, please, please show up. You're like, no, 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 no. You know, this is a test. Yeah, remember you said, you know, you always want to reward the behavior that you want to see the most, right? Mm -hmm. So I would look at the person, whatever they were not doing, and I know they should be doing, mm -hmm. I would trade, you know, something for that. Hey, if you put me on five, three-way goals this week, I'll give you a ticket. Yeah. Or if you come to the meeting and you bring a person to the meeting, I'll give you a ticket or something that, you some know. Some action. Some action that- teaches That's gonna them. be good for them. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it, it, it's sometimes with our big heart, we wanna just help somebody without 
teaching them how to help themselves mm -hmm. at the same time. You know, I'll do it, I'll do it, I'll do it, I'll do it, I'll do it. You know, here, here's a ticket, you know, and they start be, to become entitled, you know, and, and spoiled a little bit and they don't get strong. They mm -hmm. don't get tough. Um, I have a crazy story about, yeah, please, about please. this. So like one of my, one of the guys that recently just made it to the six figure mark, he, he was struggling a lot in the business and he, you know, he was 20 sales in or something like that. He didn't have any money to come to the next event. And he talked to me, he's like, can I, can I borrow the money from you? You mm -hmm. know, obviously you never mm -hmm. want to give them money. And he's like, I want to bring, you know, I know how important it is. I want to bring 20 people. I promise you I'll pay you back. And I'm like, listen, I'm not giving you money because I'm never going to do that. But here's what I'm going to do. It, in, only in this week, every person that you bring me on a three-way call and we close, I'll personally give them a ticket for the next event. And I'll give you one too, but every person that we, we close, right? So this guy go crazy because he doesn't have any money. He really wants to do it. So he goes crazy, he put me in a bunch of three-way goals. We actually close eight sales, which he, he, he ends up making a lot of money with that. I give one ticket to each person. We end up bringing 16 people to the event, right? And he was at the beginning of his business. Those 16 people that were not doing nothing in his business, and they all like just went on, on their own and hit the top rank in four months after that. And now he's earning six figures. And he bought 45 tickets on his own at this event mm -hmm. without asking any help, you know? Mm -hmm. So that's an example. I mean, a person comes and says, you know, hey, will you, will you loan me some money because I, I want to go? Um, you could create bad, you could reward bad behavior and say, oh yeah, and, and, and you're my upline. You're making money for me. Right. So, you know, you're investing in your business if you invest in me. Mm -hmm. um, mature leaders understand that you're creating more problem by doing that right. than you're solving. Uh, even if you can, like if you're, a, uh, it, what, what's hard, like for me, as a parent who's wealthy, um, with, with my kids, I, I don't want to see them in pain. Right. And if they have a financial problem, I, that's why I do all this work. I do all this work so you don't have to be in pain. So <laughs> my mistake that I make with my children is, or that I've made, not, you know, not always, my children are amazing, is, is you know, and most of them are adults, you know, so is here, here, let me, let me take this pain away from you. Um, which for the most part has not served them. It's, it's not been a good strategy. Mm -hmm. The better strategy is to say, if you do this and this and this, then I'll do that. Right. Right. Um, so you had the maturity to learn how to teach somebody how to become independent, mm -hmm. you know, and, um, because some people just feel bad. They're like, yeah, I can help you. I have the money. I'm right. your upline. I'm going to make some money if you do well. Okay, here. And then next time they have a difficult situation, what are they going to do? Call the upline. <laughs> Come back and say, you gave it to me last time. Give it to me again. And pretty soon they won't even ask. They'll just say, I need more. Right. Right. Versus saying, let me show you how to be free. How did he feel after one week of a total, a, a lot of presentations and eight sales. Mm -hmm. yeah, this is high ticket sales. So. Yeah, this is high ticket sales. So, so he, he made quite a few money, you know, yeah, like, yeah. Uh, and he was so excited and he's, he's just learned that what to do in the business. He just mm. like kept going and going and going. And then he saw bringing those people to the event, what it did to them. What, what's his name? Let's give him a shout out. Uh, Ricardo. Ricardo what? Ricardo uh, Berton. Oh, Ricardo Berton. Yes. Well done. I'm glad you had that week. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. Arturo's full name is what? Arturo Melillo. All right, great. Shout out to both of them. Shout out to both of them. Amazing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, in through this process, you know, we, we talk about belief. We talk about your vision. Mm -hmm. How much do you spend talking about your product versus your financial opportunity mm -hmm. versus your company versus your team versus your system versus your vision? How much time do you actually talk about vision versus all these other things that are important? I think it's the first thing, because I, what I tell people is that we don't, like if you focus on selling the product and the opportunity, you're not gonna be successful. So what I tell people, we sell the destination. You know, the destination is where people wanna go with their life, right? Yeah. The vision, right? 
And the product and the opportunity is the vehicle for them to get there. It's the way to be able so to So the do first it. conversation that I have with people is like, okay, we'll talk about the product, we'll talk about the business, but first, what do you, what, where do you want to go? You know, and what's some, your destination? Some people get triggered when they don't understand what we say inside of, inside of network marketing. Right. When, when we say our number one product is hope, it's the future, it's, it's the vision, it's all this other kind of thing. And they're like, oh, that sounds like bullshit, mm -hmm. you know? Um, and they're not, <clears throat> they misinterpret what we're, what we're saying in that, you know, mm -hmm. from the outside, I understand their feeling because you know, there's four things we do in network marketing. We sell product. Nothing happens until we sell product. True. Okay. So everybody's selling, use word of mouth advertising, face to face, belly to belly, influence, influencer type marketing. Um, <clears throat> we sell number two. We recruit. Some people think like, all you do is recruit, recruit, recruit. You know, my number one product is our compensation plan. Well, what what they're saying is we, the compensation plan gets people excited to go make the sales. Right. Um, so we recruit an ever-expanding team, which starts to be able to give us a little bit of leverage. It's not just what we're selling. Th third thing we do is we duplicate mm -hmm. the process. You know, so other people, Arturo, Ricardo, all these different people who are doing the thing on their own. Uh, without you, mm -hmm. you know, they're, they're in Italy, you're here, wherever they're doing their thing. And fourth thing we do is we improve the productivity of the organizations that we build based upon how good of a leader we are. Right. Right. So <clears throat> uh, the, the reason why I, I just have to take that little side note, because there's the critics of network marketing. It's like, oh, they're just, all they're doing is selling the future. All they're doing is selling the dream, 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 vision, 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 story, 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 story. You know, they don't even really care about the product. Not true. That's mm -hmm. not true. Pro nothing happens in our profession. Nobody gets rewarded for recruiting. True. Nobody gets rewarded for duplication. Nobody gets rewarded for leadership. They only get financially rewarded by sales. True. Okay. Now we use these other three functions in order to be able to create more scale mm -hmm. and leverage. If you have one uh, Starbucks, you can only sell so much coffee. If you have a thousand Starbucks right. and you improve the quality of all of those things, you build a culture around all of that, you have a different opportunity, mm -hmm. right? So I remember Magic Johnson, the the, the NBA basketball player. He spoke at GoPro too. Yeah. He said, were, were you there? Yeah, I was there. Yeah. So <clears throat> he talked about, he, he, he wanted to bring Starbucks into the inner city, mm -hmm. into, into kind of like urban America where people typically wouldn't be spending five, six, seven dollars for a coffee. Um, and he wanted to be the entrepreneur to lead that. And at the time, there wasn't any like outside franchisees, I, I think the story goes. And he had to convince the, the, the company to let him, let him start this project and become a franch franchisee in, in, and, and have this vision. So he had this vision, he sold the, sold the powerful people and he built one mm -hmm. and made it successful. Never took a penny out, took the profit from that one, opened another one, made it successful. Never took a penny out. And he built like over a hundred of them and ended up selling those hundred in one big, huge block for humongous money. I remember that. Yeah. So it's like, there's a lot of lessons there, right? Mm -hmm. He could say, I'm going to get one and I'm going to prove my point that it, it, it can work or I'm going to get one and I'm just going to take all the money um, and I'm going to use that for my lifestyle or I'm going to have a bigger vision. Right. Like you said, you know, you could have said, I'm going to sell these, pro these high ticket product products or two, I'm going to start something in Italy. Oh, check, check, check off the, the, the goal. I did it. Or you can expand it all over the place, build an empire. Mm -hmm. So to that point, how many countries do you have somebody in your team now? Oh, right now a lot. We got United States, Mexico, Canada, Italy, Spain, Germany, Dubai, uh, all over Romania, what else? Uh, Portugal, UK, we're building really strong UK right now. Going to Turkey in September, just got someone in Turkey. This week so we're like just expanding all over the world yeah it's crazy so so i have an idea what your vision was to start 
yeah. early vision was I got to get out of this restaurant. Mm -hmm. Right. You know, I have to find my thing. Yeah. Okay. Six years ago. Mm -hmm. And then the vision became, we're going to get it going in Italy. When did the vision expand beyond dominating Italy to like, Oh, there's, there's a bigger vision here. I mean, once I, I realized that I could do it once in one country, I'm like, why? I speak four languages now. So like, I'm like, I want to. What languages do you speak? Italian, English, Spanish, and Portuguese. Wow. So actually I just came back from a tour. We went to UK, Italy, Spain. And did, did, did you know these languages when you started? Um, I knew uh, uh, Spanish um, and that's it. Portuguese I learned uh, recently and uh, English obviously uh, became my, not, not my first language. Italian was my native language. And Portuguese was kind of easy to learn if you learn Spanish too. So I went to Spain. I did the whole presentation in Spain, everything in Spanish. And wow. <laughs> I know. It was so do you know what they call somebody who only speaks one language? American. American. <laughs> <laughs> because we're so lazy. We, we have this luxury that the business language of the world is English. Right. It's a luxury. True. You know, and with this conversation... You know, I'm uh, uh, by the by the time people hear this, we will have uh, uh, with your help some translation so the people in your different languages can hear it um, or, or at least read the subtitles. Mm -hmm. So hi to the Portuguese people and <laughs> and to the Italian people and the Spanish people and everybody else around the world. Um, you're 35 now. Yes. Uh, you in a relationship, family, anything? Yeah, I am about to get married in uh, Rome uh, next year in our yes. dream location. Yes. So how did Can you I invite guys, you? Uh, yeah, well, that'd be great. <laughs> uh, how, how did you guys meet? Uh, we actually met through the business too. Really? Yeah. So it wasn't Tinder though? No, no. We met, actually met at a presentation and we got to know each other and now we're going to get married. Sparks flew. How, how long was this ago? This was uh, two and a half years ago. Uh, she's actually in the business now and she's in the top rank. You yeah, met her. Yeah. Oh, I, I know, I know, I know her. I, yeah. I just want everybody else she's, to know. She's her. doing amazing. She's actually 25. She's going to do better than me for sure. Really? <laughs> yes. I believe it. She's sharp, sharp cookie. I just want to give her a shout out. Yeah. Rihanna. Tell her you. hi. <laughs> Tell her hi. Um, <clears throat> so, so you guys, how long ago did you meet? Uh, two and a half. Two and a half years ago. Yes. So you're just getting ready to get married. Yeah. In I, May. Okay. In Rome. All right. You're going to build like a big family, going to have 14 kids or what? Yeah, 11. So we do a soccer team. No, yeah. just, kidding. <laughs> <laughs> just kidding. Just kidding. <laughs> so crazy. I thought one quick soccer story. It was so crazy. I, um, the, um, uh, I have a client where I, I, I did some training and they're crazy about uh, soccer. Mm -hmm. So they had, you know, soccer stars and stuff, which I don't know anything about anything about it. And I'm meeting all these people. I'm meeting Ronaldinho and I'm reading Puyol. I'm reading Matarazzi. Uh, and, and I, I, I don't know who they are. <laughs> uh, like, hi, you know, nice to meet you. Uh, 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 what's his name? Akocha? Akocha? Ako uh, oh, no. From Africa. Uh, Okaga. No, I don't remember. Uh, anyway, super nice guys. Amazing guys. Uh, uh but, but, uh, it was it was kind of funny. It was be like somebody coming from Europe and and going to dinner with Tom Brady and not knowing, mm -hmm. you know, that that was a big. deal. That was me. I I don't know. I didn't know Tom Brady. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> he, that, like, in America, he's like royalty because you know uh, uh, American football or like LeBron James or or Michael Jordan or something. You know. So anyway, it's kind of funny. So what is your vision now? My vision now is uh, you know giving back contribution and helping people just like me, you know, like I, my vision is also to sp uh, focus on the young generation, you know, because hmm. I think like people need to learn this when they're young. Some, some people think, you know, young people, they're too distracted. You know, they don't have a work ethic. So they have all the limiting beliefs about young people. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. You don't. No, I, mean, I, I have people on my team that are like in their twenties making like six figures and, and mm -hmm. they're like, I'm never going to go to work in my life, you know? So I just want to show the young generation that there is a different way to like go to school, get a degree and get a job, especially in Italy where you're just going to end up like everybody else, you know? So that's my biggest vision to like help the younger generation to create a better future. Because uh, I think the younger generation is the future of this mm -hmm. business, you know? Mm -hmm. uh, when we first started in this business, we would go to a meeting and we would look around and it was everybody above 50, mm -hmm. in our, especially in our company, high mm -hmm. ticket sales, mm -hmm. Japanese company, you know? 
now we look around and we're like one of the, we are the youngest team in the in the company and we have like everybody's all in, this energy in the 30s and it's we're changing the game you know with social media and everything mm -hmm. so that's that's my vision for the future you know i just want to help as many young people as as again yeah and in terms of scale i mean some people in our profession they 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 get to 100,000 a year they kind of slow down you know that's cuz That's what they're more than their parents ever made, or you know, they get to twenty thousand a month. They get to thirty. At, at some point, there's something that where that where they feel weird going beyond that. And in our business, your your paycheck is a scorecard of how many people you're helping, right. how many people you're helping, how many people you're serving. True, right? So <clears throat> you have a high. Uh, there's a there's different kinds of companies in network marketing. For those listening, there's some that bring in. Um, Very, very low price of entry, uh, $50 to join, $100 to join, free to join. And you can bring in more people, give more people opportunity. But, you know, the, the, the downside of that, you know, there's downside to everything. True. The downside of that is the quality and commitment is lower. True. You can have 100,000 people, but, you know... It's it, the, the, the quality uh, in their attention, their focus, their commitment, all that stuff, because they've invested a little bit less. I wish we could charge $100,000 for a person to join and it would work with business opportunity laws mm -hmm. um, it, because people would be really serious. It'd be like they, they bought a franchise and they're, they're not, not going to let the first obstacle get in the way. Right. You have an organization that's slightly different. Mm -hmm. have significantly different because you have a higher ticket. Very different, yeah. Right, a higher ticket product. It's, you know, some would call a luxury type of a, a product category, mm -hmm. uh, in, in, at least in some people's minds. And <clears throat> because of that, you have a smaller group, but a higher commitment. True. Right? Mm -hmm. So some people I'm saying, well, you know, my group's not so big because our price of entry is way too high and people can't afford this. You just decided to disagree with that limiting belief. Right? Yeah. Is and that, the sa same thing's true with people who have lo low price of entry, believing, well, my people are just not going to be serious because of price of entry. So they have a limiting belief that they can't find quality mm -hmm. in their in their larger group, right? Yeah. So your thoughts on that? Yeah, I, I think, you know, as you said, there's pros and cons of everything. You know, like for in a, a low entry company to make an income for like five ten thousand $10,000, you probably need to have like 20,000 people buying your product every month or something like that. Yeah, or, who knows? Or who knows? It depends yeah, yeah. on the product, right? So my, my I always tell people like in our company, it, it's probably harder to sell because it's like it's a high ticket uh, item, but you only need three or four people to earn, you know, an income like three or four thousand in one month. So mm -hmm. it's just it's just like a different game, you know? And that's why people that just join, you know, they can do that in their first month versus, you know, in the average company it takes a little bit longer. So I think we have an advantage, actually, in my opinion. Oh, like I say, everything, like every town has its equalizer. Um, mm -hmm. Like in in California, the weather's beautiful. Traffic's terrible. True. Right? In And taxes are terrible over there. In Nevada, traffic's fine. There's no state taxes. Um, but it's hotter True. in the summer. You know, it's, it's a different climate. Right. So every town, Rome is beautiful, but this. Right. You know, uh, Lisbon is amazing, but this. Yeah. The point is, nothing is going to be perfect. You know, you yeah, just got to play mean, with what you have, you know. Right. And, and what, what I want to challenge everybody is don't have, don't, don't fall in love with the, your limiting beliefs. You're, you're ultimately looking for quality. If you have a higher price point, which is where I started in the profession 35 years ago, mm -hmm. was with a high price point, $5,000 price point 35 years ago. Um, and it was not easy. It, I mean, the, the, what I had to do and what people had to do in order to be able to, to succeed with that was tough inventory. Oh, <laughs> it know. was tough. Uh, I could tell a lot of stories about it. And that was the early days when people would get a big, um, supply of inventory and then they would turn around and retail that product, sell that product. Um, You know, what some people, you know, kind of criticized was you're loading up people with, with product in their garages and they, they don't go out there and sell it, right? So in today's more model, it's way more just connect yourself to the company 
and the company makes the sale. Right. You, you don't have to warehouse anything. Um, you know, I, I think the model's improved dramatically mm -hmm. and a little less difficult for somebody to be able to go out there and build. But the, at the end of the game, whether you're bringing in 20,000 people to end up with 8,000 that are, you know, actively growing your business or 50,000 people at free or close to free to end up with the same 8,000 that are mm -hmm. actively quality building your business, we give everybody an opportunity, which is great. True. You know what I mean? Um, talk to me about in the last six years, what are some of the lessons that you've learned that, you know, you can, you kind of picked up along the way. I pick, I picked up on some belief, vision, mm -hmm. promoting events, trading for, for correct activity. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, deciding to not accept other people's limiting or other countries or cultures, limiting beliefs, mm -hmm. uh, doing what's necessary, including learning other languages, which I admire, mm -hmm. learning other languages. You know what I would, I mean, I say that. Uh, <clears throat> how much I would, I like the idea of getting up on a stage and delivering what I do in Italian. In Italian, in, yeah. In, oh my gosh. Or in Spanish, I would feel so good doing it, but whatever, I don't know, I don't know if it's my, my discipline muscle, um, doesn't engage in that in that way my wife speaks four or five languages you know mm -hmm. uh danny and Alla, as you know uh speak a lot of languages uh as well who who met in italy and have their place in naples italy it's so fascinating uh what they did there but but walk through some of the lessons so one of my biggest lessons is to not over hyping the opportunity because you know sometimes we get so excited and we we promise people, you know, oh my God, you're gonna come here, you're gonna make this much money. And I think one of the key to my success has been actually preparing people for how hard it's gonna be. Yeah. You know, and and not letting because I see a lot of people get really excited. Oh, you know, this guy's making so much money, just come in. And then people try they the first problem they quit. And that's what I noticed at the beginning. We were over hyping the opportunity and people like try and then after they were gone, gone, gone. Yeah. Because they were expecting fast and quick and easy and big money. So now I do the complete opposite, you know, like I actually prepare people for way harder than it's going to be. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's why people stay longer. You know, mm -hmm. I tell them, hey, most likely at the beginning, you're not going to make any money, you're going to work harder than you will ever work later in the future. But that's how it's going to be. And you just got to know what's happened later because mm -hmm. we don't get paid for the work we do. You know, and I explain the thing mm -hmm. of the planting seeds and all that stuff. And so that, that's, that was my, my biggest lesson to prepare people for what it's going to be and to not overhype the opportunity or, or, the, the, or, the, or product. the product too. Yep. I've heard- Be we, responsible, you know, yes. You know, even exaggerating on the testimonials mm -hmm, and things mm -hmm. like that. Uh, and, and that's the key of, you know, when because people, act, most people are going to face it like me. You know, they're not going to have success at the beginning. If you come with experience, we have people that have crazy results, but that's not common, you know? So that's what I tell people, you know, this is going to be the hardest thing you ever done in your life. It's harder than your job. It's harder than studying, harder than anything. But the thing is that if you keep going and you make a long-term plan and you work hard for two to three years, you will get a result that you will not get anywhere, mm -hmm. anywhere, if mm -hmm. you do it right. But are you so committed smart. to making a long-term plan? Because that's the only way you're going to make the big money. And I, telling that people to, from the beginning, it changes the game. Because people can't come with the mentality of like, I got to work hard. I'm not going to make money for two, three years. But I know later, because Gio told me that's going to be like that. Mm. And when they see that it's exactly like that, then they trust you. And then they stay for you forever. And I have people that stay with me for since the beginning. And they're still for me with me today. A lot of them, you know. Yeah. I have so many people that stay with me, even the people that are not having the greatest result, you know, because we told them how it was gonna be. So setting proper expectations, mm -hmm. because uh, 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 I, I agree with you. Most people that leave network marketing, their expectations were way up high. The results short term were very low, and the only reason their expectations were high is because somebody told them. Mm -hmm. It was going to be fast, easy, simple. You know, everybody's making money. Everybody's Don't winning. Do nothing. Everybody's, just, yeah. Do you know, just, just connect some people. <laughs> yeah. it, it's, uh, you know, you pour, it's like an avalanche, you know, a rock turns into an avalanche going down the mountain. Um, or like passive income too, you know, like yeah. you're not going to get passive income until you're like two to three years in, you know? Right. And, and also setting the expectation that you can't just build it once and have it forever. You got to build and rebuild. That's what, all businesses do. Every business has to pivot. Every business has to change uh, in order to be able to survive and move forward in the future. Mm -hmm. What other lessons? Um, what are lessons? 
to, you know, not try to turn people that are, you know, like we, let's say on a scale one to 10, right? Mm -hmm. uh, if a person is a three, don't try to turn them into a 10, you know, just go through them to find the 10. Because sometimes mm -hmm. at the beginning, I used to fall in love with a lot of the potential of what they could be. And I wanted it more than they wanted, you know? And that was one of my biggest, I was giving so much time and energy to those people. Now I learned that, you know, you just can't tell if someone is gonna crush it or not. And if they're not, obviously you just, they're just a doorway to, you know, I met some of my top. A lot of people in your group, let me, let me phrase it a different way, are going to just end up being connectors. True. They're gonna connect you. They're not gonna be a pro. They're not gonna build a big business. Uh, but they'll get some reward for connecting you, the pro, mm -hmm. to somebody else who could become a pro right? inside of our business. And it's okay for people to be connectors. Yeah. No problem. You know, and if they decide they want to grow a business, fantastic. But in the meantime, you as the pro are going to be getting as much value out of all the relationships and contacts as mm -hmm. you can. I like, I, I, I listen to Jim Rohn a lot. So like, I, I remember he said, you know, some of those seeds that you plant are going to be a 30 percenter and that's okay. That's, that's how it is. And they're not going to change that. Mm -hmm. Some of that are going to be 80 percent. Some of them are a hundred percent. You just got to sort people and identify who are your key players and just go all in with this. And so how, now, how do you, how do you sort between somebody who says they want to do big things and doesn't do it? How do you, how do you, uh, uh, how do you identify who you're going to work with? Uh, because a lot of people talk big talk. Yeah, the, the first one, obviously, through assignments. You just, mm -hmm. you know, you just give them a small assignment. You see, like, hey, read, go, like, my first assignment to everybody is read GoPro. It's mm. like the, I call the Bible of mm. network marketing, you know? And some people, I send it to them, and the day after, it's like, I'm done, what's next? You know, that's how, like, it's it's, I just know, you know? Some people, like, oh, a, a week later, oh, how do I order it again? You know, that's also a sign, you know? So, yeah, I mean, through assignments. And also like one thing that I noticed is like all the people that are gonna crush in your business, you don't have to call them, they call you. Cause at the beginning I was calling everybody here. Have you done this? Have you done this? Have you, have you read a book yet? And I realized all the top people, they call me like every day. Hey, what do I do? Oh, I talk to this guy. What do I do next? You know? And now I learned to identify someone right away. You know, mm -hmm. someone that wanna do it, they'll call you. Mm -hmm. They wanna know how it's done. And then you give them assignments. Someone that you have to call them all the time, they're probably not gonna do it. But you still want to, you know, give them a little bit of time because they can lead you to one of those people, mm -hmm. you know, and that's what I do. I just go through them and to find the, the, the star. Well, Giordano, listen, I'm excited for you. I'm proud of you. Thank you. It's fun to watch you do what you're doing. I know it's just the beginning. You know, I, 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 I don't even know if you have the vision for this yet, but I want you to imagine, you know, 25 years from now. Okay. Mm -hmm. And you're my age. How many people have you influenced? How many lives have you, have you impacted in a positive way? Right. How many people's health were better because of you? How many people's mentality were better because of you? It's gonna be a big number. It's already a big number and it's gonna get a lot bigger. So I'm proud of you. Thank you for sharing some of your ideas and wisdom. And um, I know this is just the beginning, not only of your family that you're gonna be growing now, but, uh, but your business family that you're expanding around the world. Thank you, Eric. Thank you for having me here. You know, one of my biggest dreams is uh, speaking at GoPro, so I, I'm sure I'll, I'll accomplish that soon. It, it, you can count on it, my friend. Thank you. So I hope you enjoyed my conversation with Giordano as much as I did. If you did, please do me a favor. Smash the subscribe button wherever you're watching this. Throw a comment in. Tell me what your big takeaway is. Share this with a friend. And if you want to give me a little extra love, Maybe throw a review on this podcast. It helps us spread the word, helps us to connect with more people, which is why we're doing this in the first place, okay? So please do that. If you have it in your heart, it would mean the world to me. And until next time, go out there and make your life spectacular. Take care.